The third man important in the creation of NLP is a guy called Frank Pichelik. He was lost or ignored in the history of NLP for many, many years, and most trainers and students attribute NLP and the creation of NLP to only Richard Bandler and John Grinder until now, because the original story is slightly different. This is Andreas here from Asia Mind Dynamics with a new video about NLP. So listen in carefully and let me share with you some of Frank's background and how much he actually contributed to NLP. Now we have to go way, way back, way back into the 1960s at a time when NLP actually didn't exist. But America was at war. Frank was in a community college, but he dropped out of college in 1965 and that was a wrong decision, a wrong timing, because the US Army and the Navy grabbed him immediately for the war. But initially Frank got lucky. He was posted in Japan and he says that he actually was more engaged in playing golf than being in the war. Well that changed soon and the US Army sent him to Vietnam and he was posted there for 10 months. Now he says the resulting jungle experiences certainly took their toll and he came back to the US a broken man. Now he continued with the community college and he saw a strong need to start working on himself and to get the demons of the war, but also of his childhood, out of his system. Finally, he majored in psychology and political science, and he went to the University of California at Santa Cruz, a hotbed of innovation. Here, or earlier, he studied Gestalt therapy. Gestalt therapy was created by Fritz Perls, and those of you in NLP, of course, you must have come across that name. But Frank really became good at Gestalt therapy. Students came to him for therapy because they wanted to get off LSD, the drug LSD. Now Frank was a go-to man because, hey, after the war in Vietnam, a bad trip in LSD was nothing compared to the war experiences. Now somewhere along the line, Frank met Richard Bandler. Richard was just about 20 years old and he was a physics computer science student at the University of California as well. And both Frank and Richard formed an intense friendship and helped each other to rebuild their lives. And as they became really good at it, they started to lead training groups for students who were also interested in Gestalt therapy. So Richard and Frank began teaching Gestalt therapy. After a couple of months, Richard invited a new linguistic guy to visit the groups. A guy who just finished his doctorate degree in linguistics. And the guy's name, of course, you know, is John Krinder. And initially, John just sat in the back of the room and he took notes, tedious notes, but then he started asking questions. Initially, hey, Frank and Richard, both being young, they played the role of, hey, I know it all. But then, they invited John to join them and the three of them began working as a close team. So Frank, Richard and John started to work in creating that beautiful thing that we now call NLP, which was called differently initially, but in 1977. For reasons unknown so far, Frank was asked to leave by Richard Bandler in 1977. NLP at that time was officially named NLP for two years. From that point onwards, Frank disappeared out of the official development of NLP, but he says himself that he always observed the development of NLP and only around the mid-2000s started to emerge back onto the scene. Today, we need to acknowledge him as a major contributor to the emergence of NLP, someone who can stand proudly aside of Richard Bandler and Sean Krinder and all the others that came after them. This is Andreas here from Asia Munch Dynamics and I hope you enjoyed this clip about the real history of NLP.